Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we are super excited to finally have for you our first Ring Wraith painting tutorial. It has been so long coming, and we are so happy to finally have this for your viewing pleasure today. We're also super excited as we're going to be painting up the brand new Witch King of Angmar sculpt, the new plastic kit from Games Workshop, which is an absolutely beautiful model and can be assembled uh, one of two ways, either with the hooded variant from the Fellowship or the much more menacing variant with all his armour and the horrifically terrifying helmet. Once we decided what variant we were going with, our model was removed from the sprue, mould line cleaned and assembled using plastic glue. The model was then affixed to the base with plastic glue once again and once this was dry, the base was covered with fine modelling sand and finally once this was dry, undercoated with Chaos Black spray. This model honestly was a genuine pleasure to paint. There are three main areas on the model which we'll be concentrating on the most and once these are done you'll find the model just comes together so quickly and so easily. But without further delay, please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. First, we're going to start base coating all the metal work on the Witch King himself with iron hand steel, making sure we get around all the bits on both of the shin guards and greaves, all around the sword and all the pauldrons, and all around the inner workings and spikes on the helmet. Now we're going to start base coating the robes with Avedon Black mixed with a small amount of Inky by Darkness. This will just very, very subtly lift the tone from a jet black to a slightly off black which will make the following highlighting and layering stages later on in the video uh, all that more effective and all that more natural looking rather than working from a jet black to a very light grey later on. Now we can use a mix of Thondia Brown, Doomball Brown and a small amount of Abaddon Black to base coat the main body of the horse. These are the only base coats we're going to be applying to the model at this stage as all the reins, straps and other little bits of metal and detail are fairly small in comparison to these other three large main surface areas. Now we're going to apply a very light shade to all the armour with some thinned down Agrax Earth shade, applying this as a very light layer over all the metalwork just to give it that subtle brownish tone to the Morgul armour that we want to get. Once this is dry, we're now going to use pure non oil and tone down the armour further, letting it sink into the recesses and giving it that dark, Mordory toned, beaten look which we want for this ring wraith. Once both washes are dry, we're going to very carefully now use Iron Breaker and apply an edge layer to all the raised areas and filigree across all the metalwork, being careful to leave the null oil showing in the recesses. There's a lot of very well defined detail on this model, particularly around the shin guards, the shoulder pads and the helmet itself, so it's really easy to work out where this needs to go. Just keep your highlights long, thin, unbroken and as controlled as you can to really give that sharp, menacing look that you want to get from the Witch King's armour. Finally, we're going to use Iron Breaker mixed with a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh as per usual and we're going to apply an Extreme Edge highlight to all the armour plating. We've gone from quite a dark shade of armour through to quite a stark light shade of armour for the highlighting stages. This is to really accentuate the sharpness and the malice of the Witch King's armour. Being careful to frame the face around the eyes in particular and all the spiky points on the crown of Morgul. Once you're happy with how this looks, 
we're just going to apply a very light glaze over the top of all this to tie all the layers and highlights together with non oil. Thin down significantly with Lamia Medium. We're going to start with the robes now by applying a manual shade of Abaddon Black to all the recesses on the cloak. This can also be achieved by a wash of Nile Oil, but then we risk upsetting the balance and smoothness of the base coat of the cloak. So a manual shade allows a lot more control and allows for a much better look once we've finished. Now we're going to very gradually start adding in Dawnstone to the previous Abaddon Black and Incubi Darkness mix. We've gone for approximately one part Dawnstone to four parts the original base coat mix, and we're going to apply this as a layer all over the model leaving the Abaddon Black manual shade showing in the deepest recesses. Now we stress we want to add this in gradual increments, but make sure we don't overload it with Dawnstone too quickly as we want to build up a very gradual progression from the dark areas of robes to the lighter areas to keep it looking natural, warm, and as you would in the films. We're going to continue the process by adding more and more gradual increments of Dawnstone to the original base coat mix and at each stage we're going to focus on pushing our layer stage a little bit closer to the edges of the cloak and all the apexes of all the folds of material just to further enforce that transition from the darker areas to the lighter areas of upper material. Once you finish this layer stage your mix should contain no more than about 40% Dawnstone to the previous base coat mix. Once you're happy with how your layer stages look, we're going to repeat the process again, but this time adding small amounts of Administratum Grey. This will just help accentuate that ink by darkness in the base coat mix as well as raising the tone and pigmentation of the Dawnstone really naturally. Focus again on pushing this towards the upper areas of all the cloth and all the edges just to create that seamless blend. Continue adding Administratum Grey in as smaller increments as you like. This is the final layer stage with this we're showing here. At this point, our mix contains no more than 50% Administratum Grey for the previous layer stage. This will avoid you overwhelming the pigmentation and the tone and making too stark a contrast between the darker and lighter areas. If you're happy with how this looks, using pure administratum grey now, we're going to apply a very, very fine edge highlight just to the very most upper and outer edges of all the robes, just to accentuate the points of light bouncing off the most raised areas of cloak. As you can see, we're not going down the whole length of all the robes here, we're just going off the very apex of all the curves in folds in the material. Now as we did with the Witch King's robes, we're going to apply a manual shade to all the horse musculature with Rhinox Hide. And it will just complement really well with the tone of the base coat mix for the horse's main body once it's dried. Now we're going to start adding in small amounts of ungore flesh to the previous Thondia Brown, Doomball Brown and Abaddon Black mix. We're going to start layering up by focusing on the main areas of musculature. Leaving the Rhinox Hide, Manual Shade showing in the recesses to define the horse's main body as best as we can.
and again continue adding ungore flesh until your mix contains about 50% ungore flesh once again for the following layer stage. Again just accentuating more of the musculature and pushing those raised areas a little bit further just to accentuate the tone and shadow across the horse's main body. Once you're happy with how your layer stages look, start adding in small amounts of pallid witch flesh to the mix in gradual increments until you reach a shade and highlight level that you're happy with. This is the final highlight stage, again which our mix contains no more than 50% pallid witch flesh to the previous layer mix. And you can see we're just concentrating now on highlighting the most upper and outer areas of all musculature just to really define the horse's strength in his main body. We use a mix of dryer bark and Abaddon black now and we're going to very carefully just pick out all the straps and belts on the Witch King himself. This is mainly around the waist and the stirrups. Now using a mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon black we're going to very carefully paint in all the straps across the horse itself. This includes all the reins on the underside and around the main body of the horse itself, around its back and all the reins and straps across its head and neck. We're now going to highlight all the straps on the Witch King himself by adding some Bane Blade Brown to the previous Dryad Bark Abaddon Black mix. And as we did with the straps on the Witch King, we're going to highlight all the reins and straps on the horse now with pure Storm Vermin Fur. Keeping our highlight application as tight and controlled as we can to really make this highlight stage pop. Now we've finished all the straps, reins and belts on the model, we're going to go around with lead belcher and pick out any buckles, any loops and hoops and chains that we left on the model. Then apply a very quick dot highlight to all these buckles and loops with Runefang Steel. Now we're going to very carefully paint in the horse's eyes with corn red. And then once that's dry, a very careful dot highlight of Fire Dragon Bright just to finish off the pupils for this evil malicious steed. Now we're going to use a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide and very carefully feather on a layer stage for the hoof hair. Now we're going to add a small amount of Talon Sand to the previous mix and apply this as a highlight over the hoof hair. Again, we're going to want to feather this on a little bit in short, unbroken streaks to give the impression of hair above the hooves. And then finally, an edge highlight with pure Talon Sand just to finish off the horse's hoof hair. Now we're going to base coat the hooves and the tail hair with the same mix we used for the strap, a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black. Now we're going to apply a wash to all these areas with non oil thinned down with a little bit of Lamia Medium. Once this is dry, we're going to increase the amount of Storm Vermin Fur in the previous mix 
and apply a layer, leaving the long oil showing in the recesses between all the hair. And then apply a further highlight with pure storm vermin fur. First, we're going to use Rakar Flesh and very carefully pick out the horse's teeth. Followed by a very careful dot highlight for Pallid Witch Flesh just to separate them out a little bit now and create some definition in the jaw. Now we're going to use Bugman's Glow and very, very carefully now pick out the horse's tongue, which sits just at the front behind the teeth. And then a very careful, quick edge highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. Our base was painted with a three stage dry brush, first using dry up bark. followed by a further dry brush of Gawthor Brown and a final dry brush over the top with Pallid Witch Flesh. The base was then decorated with grass tufts, foliage and dead leaves and the rim of the base was painted with a solid line of dry bark. And there we have it, the leader of the Nine, the malicious and terrifying Witch King of Angmar, leaving Minas Morgul in pursuit of the Ring for the Dark Lord Sauron and leading his armies in the conquest of the free peoples of Middle-earth. A truly awe-inspiring and terrifying figurehead for any Angmar or Mordor army. <laughs>